Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear brothers. Yo, the message reads like this. Hello brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? My brother, my father, let me say that my grandfather, he was the one who came from Malawi and when he came to Zim, he then got married to our grandmother who was a Zimbabwean woman. So that was when my father and his brothers were born, including the sisters as well. But there was a whole lot of drama that was happening there. People were using a lot of witchcraft against each other. I actually do not know where this jealousy came from, but the thing that we had from our mother after our father had passed away was that the jealousy started after my father had gotten married to my mother. So my mother, she came from a family where there were a lot of mechanics. So my father's brother-in-laws, my uncles, they took my father and they said that they wanted to train him so that he can become a mechanic. So when my father was now a mechanic, there was sort of like a disagreement that happened between him and his own brothers because when they would come to his garage and when he will say, let me teach you the same way that I was taught by my in-laws how to fix cars so that you can also be independent. It was like they would say, the reason as to why you want us to work for you, it is because you want you want to use us and you do not want to give us any money. And my mother said, he tried to explain this situation to his own brothers that when he was being taught by his in-laws how to fix cars, he was not being given money because he was actually getting the knowledge so that in life he can be able to make more money. But they wanted instant money. So this is what my mother told me. So my father died, Brother Nashi is a poor man. There is a spirit of poverty that is going around in our family. Even if you make a lot of money, that spirit of poverty will keep on following you. And to show you that this spirit of poverty, sometimes it can be much more powerful than these prayers. What happened was that my mom was a very prayerful woman. So when my father started to experience some of the problems at his garage, like he would fix a car, then the car will be damaged even more, so much that the owner will return back the car. Then my father had to fix or to buy even more expensive parts on that car that he would have recently fixed. That is how the spirit of poverty operates. My mother tried to pray, but the prayers were not going anywhere. My father died as a poor man, but I am thankful to my father that before he had passed away, he taught me how to fix cars. So in Zim, I was also working as a mechanic, even if I would work for 24 hours. But at the end of the day, the money that I would have gotten, when I would sit down, I would ask myself, I don't know if you have ever done such a thing that me and my wife used to do when we were still back home in Zim, even when we came to South Africa. We would go out to buy some groceries for the month. Then when we would sit down, with the paper and we'll see that indeed we went for shopping but the things that we bought you could never understand where the money would have gone to and we didn't even wear nice clothes we were just suffering we were starving yet i was making some money that was enough for me to feed my family and when we saw that this was the situation me and my wife we said ah maybe it is because of the economic environment that is in our country and that is how i ended up being here in south africa when i came here to south africa i was working for a big auto shop brother Nashi. most of the guys that work for this auto shop they are paid very well because usually we used to offer roadside assistance working with different insurance companies the money that we were earning it was quite a lot but still brother Nashi, when i would look at me at myself when i would look at my workmates i was the one whom you could tell that this guy is just a poor guy, a very, very poor guy. We struggled to even buy clothes for ourselves. I still remember this other year when my wife had to sew her own 
underway you know how things are cheap here in south africa but i could not even afford to go and buy an underwear for my own wife let alone a skin tight she only had one that we once bought at pep when i started working for this company it was all that she had when we would go to church she would quickly wash it early in the morning then she will put it outside so that it can dry then it's around nine that was when she will take it then she will iron it that is how much poor we were yet i was working as a mechanic i was even a head mechanic at that company but the money was just disappearing then i thought of opening up my garage because i said maybe this thing of me working it is what is causing me to have all of this poverty so let me start let me try to start my own thing then maybe i'll be making a lot of money so with the connections that i already had there was this other a white guy who works sort of like a broker he spoke with some insurance companies and i got a contract and i started fixing like big cars and i was getting a lot of money i ended up fixing even those jcbs and you know that fixing them it cost a lot of money I was making money within a very short period of time we had actually gotten an offer from the bank the bank was willing to give us a car on credit but that car brother nashi it had an accident and it was a write-off that is the level of poverty that is in our family it does not matter how much you will be earning looking at my family's history there was a time when i went to speak with this other man i wanted him to sell one of his trucks to me because i had heard that he had actually bought a new fleet of trucks so i went and i spoke with him well, at least we were talking about the trucking industry he then said if you are not strong you are not going to make it and when he told me that when you are not strong in this industry you are not going to make it i knew exactly what he meant this man he comes from an area in marange so we spoke about what makes a man to be strong and he said if you are willing let us travel let us have a road trip and let us return back to zim and i will show you what it means to be a strong man I was then told to place it in an area where no one was going to touch it at that time when i did these rituals at the apartment where we were staying we had this food pantry and we actually had to put a locker on that pantry so that the maid will not gain access to the food pantry that woman she actually thought that we were suspecting that she was stealing from us and my wife said it is better if she suspects that she, we think that she is stealing from us whenever she wanted anything from the pantry then she had to ask my wife because inside the pantry that is where we were keeping this route when this root transformed itself and when it became a snake i spoke with the old guy and i told him exactly what was going on and that guy spoke with his traditional healer because i do not have any access to his traditional healer so the response that i got back was that i have to do anything that this snake is going to demand from me and i should not ask any questions that is what i was told brother nashi so it has been two years now i am still waiting for this snake to tell me what it wants from me this snake it is getting longer and longer by the day and now it is about a meter long and when i was given this snake mind you it was as long as my smallest finger it really surprises me the way that this snake has gotten so big so this guy who made me to join all of these rituals when i told him that look the snake that root that transformed itself and became a snake it is getting bigger and bigger by the day he laughed at me and he told me that his own snake that transformed itself from a root he said you see at one of my properties that is where it stays at one of his houses he said that this snake it is very big and heavy so much that if he has to ever transport it from one point going with it to another point then he has to use a forklift he then said so you can just imagine how heavy this snake has gotten and he feeds this snake he only told me that i have to listen to what the snake is going to tell me